Let's get you the latest coming out of KwaZulu Natal. An Etekwini mayor, Nkoli Sikawunda, has been visiting bereaved families of victims killed in the Marion Hill mass shooting this past weekend. Seven people died. That's after gunmen entered a local hangout in the area. The shooters are still at large, and this has left the community shaken. The attack was one of two fatal shootings in KwaZulu Natal this weekend, prompting tough police action and an intense probe into gun violence in that province. Natalie Malchas is standing by to be in conversation with the police commissioner. Natalie, it's over to you. Good afternoon. Dudu, we spent most of this morning travelling through Marion Hill with the mayor and his entourage as he met with the victims' families to share his condolences and also to uh, encourage those families to assure them that uh, from the highest order their cases are receiving all the necessary uh, attention uh, and support should they need with regard to burials. But as you mentioned, this incident has also raised the issue of gun violence in in not only Durban, but in KwaZulu-Natal as a whole, which is why um, we've visited the Provincial Commissioner's Office to get an update on the latest developments uh, with regard to uh, the shooting that happened in Marion Hill on Saturday. Commissioner, we heard from the Mayor that people were taken in for questioning or into custody. What is the detail on that shooting incident? Yeah, well, we're still investigating, and, and as we continued investigation, there is some uh, of the leads that we follow and, and there are people that you come across that are suspects to, that might be involved and might have to give us, help us with some answers. Uh, so we do take people for questioning every now and then and, and it's not different this time around. So there are some people that we've taken in uh, for questioning and, and the, the fortunate part is we did find some firearms. On them. That was one of the things that the residents had told us, the prevalence of guns in their communities that has them feeling particularly traumatized and shaken because these criminals are just growing increasingly brazen. Is this the biggest headache for police in this particular province, the illegal guns flooding the communities? And these guns that you were able to recover, were they legal? Were they licensed firearms? Yeah, well, obvious. It's not licensed once you get it from criminals. Um, majority of them, they would have several numbers erased, and which, which means that perhaps they might have been stolen somewhere. But the, the farms are not growing from the ground, they're not falling from the sky. The, the, the farms that were once legal firearms, were they either owned by a private person and they were stolen, or they were owned by a private person who was deceased and somebody decided one of the families would take that firearm instead of giving it back to the police and they sell it. Or it's a firearm that belongs to security agencies, and, and might have been stolen there, or belonging to a law enforcement, and police included, and farms that might have been stolen. Unfortunately, we only report police firearms that are lost every year when we report our stats, and we tend not to cover the number of firearms that are, are lost from security companies, from private individuals, but there's a number of them that get lost. So those are the firearms that are, are creating this chaos that we have. And, and what makes it worse, the availability of ammunition it makes it worse. Commissioner, what role does the community play in stopping this violence and perhaps in some instances harboring the criminals? What would the police service like to see of the community to really break the back of this criminal trend? Yeah, it's all in the hands of the community. Uh, crime is committed by the very same family members that belongs to these families. Uh, so if communities are going to stand up and, and be united and, and stop the small criminal activities that happens in their neighborhood, and they can prevent bigger things from happening. But they allow small things to happen. A, a young boy starts stealing vehicles, and, and it, they praise him as a, as a you know, known gang uh, a, a criminal in the area. And, and the youngsters, then they grow up learning that they must also do the same. But communities allow that. Um, there is a Nyanga in the area, like in this case of Maran Hill, that is known that this Nyanga survived from uh, cleansing all these criminals that are coming to, to her. But the community do nothing about it until an incident like this happens and, and then everyone gets to, uh, to blame the police. So we really need communities to stand up and stop this. And if a place is not licensed to sell liquor, the communities must stand up and stop it. If the, the liquor premises is situated close to 
to their houses and close to schools, the communities must stop it. If, if they stand up and they do that, they make life easier for the police. And, and if they see something wrong, let them call the police and so that police can respond. And then you can blame the police if they've been alerted of the wrong. And not allegations. If you're going to allege that so-and-so has committed crime, you don't have evidence, then unfortunately there's nothing much that can be done. The police might take that person for questioning, but if there's no evidence, the person is back on the street. Commissioner, when we talk about the illicit trade and the black markets of ammunition and firearms, what impact, if any, that you can think of did the looting of ammunition during um, the mass looting we saw in the province have on the flooding of ammunition onto, uh, and for these illicit activities? Well, I can't talk much about the ammunition that was stolen last year during the riots, but the availability of ammunition in general uh, from the licensed uh, gun shops that sell this ammunition is a problem for us. This month alone uh, of July that, we, we, that is finished, uh, we've recovered as a police over 4,000 rounds of ammunition. Just one month alone. Uh, we've recovered almost 300 firearms, of which majority of them are handguns. Just one month alone. So yeah, that just shows you that there are so many of them that you have not recovered. You, you arrest a criminal with a firearm and it, it clearly tells you that, no, it's not the first time I killed someone. I've killed eight, so many number of people. And uh, he says that without fear. You know, there's no conscious. There's nothing. It's, it's for them. It's just survival. Thank you very much, Police Commissioner here in KwaZulu Natal Dudu. Really echoing the messages we heard from the mayor a little earlier, that the community does have a role to play in breaking the back of the criminal trend that seems to uh, have a hold on several communities in the area. Yeah, thank you very much, Natalie, for that update.